Praise the Lord. God bless you. I'm Pastor Gemma Winger, and you're watching Beauty for Ashes. And I just have a heart for those right now who are listening, who are discouraged, who are despondent, who just feel like there's no hope. And we're going to pray right now. We're going to break through in the spirit because you know that's a lie from the enemy. And he wants to bring you down. You have a mighty call. You have a destiny. You have a vision that you need to achieve in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you give up, it's not going to happen. So keep on serving God. Keep on pressing forward in the things that God has for you because God is going to bless the work of your hands. And when you least expect it, when you think that it's over, hallelujah, that's when the blessing is going to come. That's when the miracle is going to come. Let's pray right now. Oh, God, I just thank you, Lord, for those listening, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that you are a miracle-working God. We bind you, Satan. We rebuke you, Satan. We take authority over every evil spirit. We command every attack, every assignment, every stronghold of the enemy to be broken now in the name of God. Jesus, we speak victory, victory, victory. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that a feeling of hope, a feeling of joy, a feeling of encouragement is just going to come over those who are listening, Father God, that you are ministering to their hearts, Lord Jesus, as only you can do by your Holy Spirit. Let your Holy Spirit descend upon your children right now, Father God. And I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You are the joy and the rejoicing of our heart that, Father God, we're going to pray without ceasing. We're going to rejoice evermore. We're going to be patient in tribulation. Oh God, we just command that spirit of doubt to go in Jesus' name. Discouragement must go in the name of Jesus, for we know that whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And right now, God, we're putting our faith in you. We're putting our trust in you. The enemy has tried to attack over and over and over again, but move by your spirit, breath of life, breathe new life into the hearts of your children, Father God. And those who are sick, Lord, just heal, heal, heal. Father God, touch that area of sickness. Father God, purify the blood. Heal from that virus. Heal that lower back in the name of Jesus. Heal those joints. Heal that organ, Father God. Take away the pain in Jesus' name, for you are the God that heals us. You are the Lord, our healer, and God, we just wait upon you. You are mightier than the enemy. You are bigger and more powerful than the darkness. Hallelujah. You died on the cross and you defeated death, hell, sin, and the grave. And we thank you, Father God, that your healing power is being released right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We're reading from Ecclesiastes, and God just put Ecclesiastes on my heart. It was written by Solomon. It was written in his latter years, and he'd been there, he'd done that, been there, done that. He had the greatest riches in the land. He was the king. He was the wisest man. He had everything that the world had to offer, and this was his wisdom. This was his understanding at the end of his days. What is really important in life? What is life all about? Starting out with Ecclesiastes 3.11, he has made everything beautiful in its time. He has put eternity in their hearts. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He's going to make everything beautiful in your life. Believe him right now. God, hallelujah, just speak it. God, I know you're going to make that situation beautiful. God, I know that you're going to turn it around. Praise God. And it's in God's timing. So wait upon him. Tarry, occupy till you see the revealing of the promise of God in your life. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then Ecclesiastes 7, 3. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. So if your countenance is sad, your heart is becoming stronger. Your faith is increasing. Hallelujah. You're placing your faith and your trust in God to overcome the darkness, that you're going to believe that you're not going to stay in that situation, but God's going to turn it around by his spirit, by his power. When you couldn't do it in your own flesh, no matter how hard you tried, you're going to see the Lord do it. For by sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. Because when you're sad, you get into prayer. When you're sad, you're like, oh, I need to go to church. When you're sad or something happens that's, that didn't go the way you expected, you're like, hmm, let me think about this. Let me think about my life. And let me think about my actions and what direction I am going. And a lot of times, God speaks to us through situations. He speaks to us through trials and tribulations. He speaks to us through the discipline of the Lord. And a lot of times things happen and we actually say, ooh, you know, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. And we realize that we have been sinning. And if we don't turn our lives around, we're going to end up going in the wrong direction. And we could die and go to hell. It's going to be bad for us in this life and in the life to come. Ecclesiastes 7, 8. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. You know, I often say, I really want want to go back to the beginning, you know, my birth with all the trials, all the tribulations that I've been through, just the sheer hard work, the blood, sweat, and tears, that it has to get better. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning of the thing. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Those who are walking around, they're proud, they think they're so great. Money brings a lot of pride. People rely on their money and that gives them their identity and their self-confidence and then they feel they have a right to look down on other people. But the Lord is saying, be patient, be patient, be patient. And the greatest example of this is with children. Children are going to react to a situation the way you react or their parents react to a situation. So if something negative happens and parent flies off the handle, child is going to fly off the handle when something negative happens. And then you wonder why they're doing that. And then you discipline them and then they get spanked and then they keep doing it because they do what they see. So model how to react differently. Model a more productive way of responding to the situation. Children are like that. They're just going to receive it. Show them what to say. Show them what to do. Show them a negative way to respond. Show them a positive way to respond. And if you're patient, they're going to be patient. So praise God, better is the patient in spirit than the proud in spirit. Hallelujah. 7, 9. Be not hasty in your spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of of fools. Be not hasty in your spirit to be angry. Anger rests in the bosom of fools. Again, when something doesn't go your way, you get angry. When all of a sudden you're overwhelmed with frustration and and the trials and tribulations of life, you get angry. We have to put that anger to death. We have to die to that anger. Man's anger does not bring about the righteous judgment of God. God wants you to exhibit self-control and temperance. Be not hasty in your spirit. And I praise God, even on the job, I'm an administrator over many people. And I believe what has made me successful is I'm extremely patient 
And when all of a sudden I hear that something has happened, I find out all the information. I don't jump to conclusions, and I actually realize that what I thought happened didn't actually happen, and some of the people had a very good explanation for why they did something that way. So it's very important to be patient, breathe, take a breath. You'll be promoted if you show that patience, if you show that understanding. And you know, if, if people are working for somebody who's very quickly angered, or even if children have parents who are very quickly angered, they're not able to reach out and explore and stretch out and challenge themselves and try new things because they're afraid that somebody's going to be angry at them, that somebody's going to yell at them. And it's so important that we're patient with people because even if you're not in the room, that person is going to remember your anger and they're going to be tormented by it and they're going to be walking in fear rather than in doing the best job that they can possibly do. So there's a balance between doing a very good job, hallelujah, and walking in fear of failing or fear of making somebody upset. Praise God. You're going to get a lot more out of people if you love on them, if you encourage them. Praise God. It's so important that we encourage people around us. Love is as strong as death. You know, love is strong. Love is powerful. You love somebody, you give them a present, half the time they burst out in tears. They need a little love. They need to be um, feel like they're valuable. And we need to show them the love of Jesus and truly bless those who curse us and pray for those who despitefully use us and persecute us. So it says, anger rests in the bosom of fools. We don't want to be a fool. And a lot of people are in jail because they got so out of control, angry, that they did something violent, physically violent. So again, we're asking the Lord to give us temperance, to give us love instead of anger. Ecclesiastes 7.12, for wisdom is a defense and money is a defense But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to them that have it. Wisdom is a defense. Someone tells you something, and you're like, wait, there's something wrong. I mean, the other day on Facebook, all of a sudden, someone was messengering me, and they supposedly were in the army in Afghanistan, and it was just like, all of a sudden, they wanted to marry me, and I'm like, wait a minute here. I don't think this is legit. It was wisdom. You know, the other day, oh, you've just won $500,000 in the Facebook, something, something. Really? I don't think so. You know, wisdom is a defense. You've had a lot of life experiences, and people are going to try to come and pull the wool over your eyes and say things that aren't really going to be true or aren't really going to happen. And you know from your experience, oh, been there, done that. Wisdom will protect you from losing, from missing out, from being robbed or shortchanged, from being taken advantage of. Because then you can protect yourself and say, no, no. Also, money is a defense. Money is a protection, as well as I always say, money is power. If you have money, you don't have to work. You can do whatever you want. You can minister full time. But if you don't have money, then you have to go to your job and then you minister after your job. Hallelujah. I know people who have retired and they have a pension and they're able to minister full time. Those ministries that are very strong and have a lot of money, they can make the decisions. They're not in bondage to anybody. Praise God. So money is power. You can have more choices. You can go more places. You can stay in better hotels. So praise the Lord. And again, we're looking at Ecclesiastes. This is Solomon having seen it all and done it all. These are the truths that he has come up with. 713, consider the work of God, for who can make that straight which he has made crooked? If God has shut that door, nobody's going to open it. If God says, I want that crooked in that place, nobody's going to change it. In the day of prosperity, be joyful. 
But in the day of adversity, consider. God also has set the one over against the other to the end that man should find nothing after him. He's saying there are days and seasons of adversity and trials. Nobody's going to be exempt. And there are days and seasons of happiness and joy. Ecclesiastes 7, 15. All things I have seen in the days of my vanity. There is a just man that perishes in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man that proclaims his life in wickedness. He's saying, here's a wicked man doing evil, and this guy keeps on living. And he lives on for a ripe old age, and he's still not dead yet. And then you see some beautiful wife of a pastor serving God, starting a church, and then all of a sudden their, their life is, is cut short through a, a burglary, and, and, and they're actually murdered. Does it make sense? No. It doesn't make any sense. That person who's serving God should have lived a long life rather than that person whose morals have destroyed the entire nation who they're still alive. And again, Solomon is saying, I've seen it all. And as I get older, I say the same thing. I've seen it all. I've seen it all. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 8.8. 8. There is no man that has power over the spirit to retain the spirit, neither has he power in the day of death, and there is no discharge in that war. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. Man does not have power over the spirit to retain it. When God says it's time for you to die and go to heaven, you know, no machine, no intubator, no hospital equipment is going to keep you alive because God is in control of your spirit and he knows your last day and your last breath. He is in charge and you can't prolong your days when he has said, no, it's time. It's time. No man has power over the spirit to retain the spirit. Neither has he power in the day of death. God has all power to make that decision. Ecclesiastes 8.11 Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. So because judgment doesn't come right away, people continue to do evil. I just give the example, you know, you smoke a cigarette, you're young, you're vibrant, you smoke a pack, nothing happens. Judgment is not executed swiftly. But 20 or 30 years down the line, all of a sudden lung cancer, emphysema, bronchitis, all of a sudden you reap what you have sown. But it's happened 30 years later. So we have to know that we're going to serve God. We need to stop smoking now. Hallelujah. What about that person who steals? Maybe you steal something from your classmate or you steal something from the teacher or, or you steal some money from your mom. All of a sudden, they don't find out right away. And then you keep doing it. But pretty soon, you're going to end up in jail. Pretty soon, you're going to end up in juvenile hall. Pretty soon, you're going to reap what you sow. So this is just a fact. Ecclesiastes 8.12 Though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. It shall be well with those who fear God. God is going to bless you. God is going to make a way for you. It shall be well for those who fear God. Have you been fearing God? Have you been respecting God and honoring God and following his commandments? He says, it shall be well with you. 8.13, but it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he fears not before God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Ecclesiastes 9.11, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance happens to them all. You may be the smartest, you may be the brightest, you may be the most skillful, but you didn't get picked because time and chance happens to them all. Your time is coming. You will be picked soon. You know, what I've noticed is just that as far as like teams and even like soccer clubs or even positions of authority, the more they get to know you, even acting parts, the more they see your resume over and over again, they get to know you. And then finally, it's your time to get picked. Sometimes you try one time and you don't get picked, but they have to be familiar with you. Time and chance happens to us all. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 9.15 Now there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no one remembered the same poor man. Then I said, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. The poor man's wisdom is despised. He could be speaking the truth. He could have insight and understanding. But because he doesn't have that big bank account, people overlook him. People don't listen. But you're talking to somebody who went to Skid Row for 25 years. You know, I know when God uses those homeless people to speak his word, to speak that word of life or speak that word of encouragement. And the Bible says that man judges the outward appearance, but God judges the heart. So we would make a lot less mistakes if we looked at the heart rather than at the outward appearance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes, praise God. We're in 9, 18. Let's go to 17. Words of the wise spoken quietly should be heard rather than a shout of a ruler of fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroys much good. One sinner, one person who comes there in the flesh, they're concerned about themselves, lifting themselves up rather than exalting the name of the Lord is going to actually destroy the work that God is doing. One sinner destroys much good. And I've had that happen in my life where God was doing something beautiful and the enemy just came in through this person with all these lies. And the worst thing is, is that people believed the lie of the enemy. And that is frustrating. So the good that was going to happen didn't happen. And instead it turned out to be an attack of the evil one, and tack of the enemy. Ecclesiastes 10.1. Dead flies putrefy the perfumer's ointment and cause it to give off a foul odor. So does a little folly for one respected for wisdom and honor. And the Lord was really showing me, you know, you can have like a great character and so many positive qualities, but if you have one area where there's darkness, where you're walking in the flesh, It's going to destroy all the good. You can be doing a lot of good things, but you may have anger issues, and that may cause you to get violent. And then, you know, whatever goes from there, the police are called, people are hurt, people are wounded, you may end up going to jail. You know, there can be people who have just so much love in their heart, but they have unforgiveness, they have bitterness. And that causes um, just their hearts to be putrid. So you have this beautiful oil, but one fly in it is going to destroy the whole ointment. You know, what if you bought perfume and you open it up and there's a fly in the perfume? You're, you don't want any of it. You're not even going to touch that perfume. Well, it's just in one corner over here. No way! Right? So that's why we have to get all the flies out. We have to get all the negativity, all the darkness, all the flesh. Praise God. We want to walk upright and holy before the Lord. 
Ecclesiastes 10, 5 through 7. There is an evil I have seen under the sun, as an error proceeding from the ruler. Folly is set in great dignity, while the rich sit in a lowly place. I have seen servants on horses, while princes walk on the ground like servants. Hallelujah. So he's saying, I've seen folly set in great dignity. People put in positions of authority who really don't deserve it, who aren't that nice, who aren't that understanding, who aren't um, that knowledgeable. But then that person who really doesn't have a lot going for them, who's really not, doesn't have that understanding, they're exalted. Whereas that person with great wisdom, hallelujah, it says, while princes walk on the ground like servants. And this is Solomon. There's nothing new under the sun. He has seen it all. So we have to pray. We have to pray that God would exalt those who have wisdom and understanding, that God would lift those up who are good leaders. And we just have to pray. If you're under somebody who's not a very good leader, who stirs up strife and division rather than bringing unity and peace, we need to pray for them. So let's bow our heads right now. God, we just thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for your anointing. Just one touch from the master's hand. God, there's somebody who is seeking wisdom. There is somebody who's seeking your direction. Father God, I pray that you would open the eyes of their understanding, that you would give them revelation knowledge. We thank you, Lord, for breakthrough. We thank you, Lord, for a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit. Touch, Lord. Touch, Lord. The presence of the Holy Spirit is here. Just honor his presence. He wants to minister to you right now. Oh, yes, Lord. We praise you, Lord God. We want to serve you. We want to do the right thing. We want to follow you. Give us the strength to walk in obedience to you. And what the devil meant for evil, God, you're going to turn it around for good. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God's a good God. He's good all the time. If you would like to contact me, you can go to my website, gemmawanger.com. You can donate through PayPal on the website, or you can send your donations and your prayer requests to 1154 Roberto Lane, Los Angeles, California, 90077. Also, I have meetings on Monday nights and Friday nights in West Los Angeles, You can go to the website. You can get that address every Monday and Friday at 7.30 p.m. God bless you. I love you. There is hope in Jesus. Be encouraged.